Hi everyone, welcome to this Monday, July 4th. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from the Seize the Word community and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us on this Monday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. On this day, we celebrate Saint Elizabeth of Portugal. Elizabeth, known in Portugal as Isabel, was the daughter of King Peter III of Aragon and of Constance granddaughter of Emperor Frederick II. Born in 1271, she was named after her great aunt, Saint Elizabeth of Hungary. Her birth prompted a reconciliation between her father and grandfather, thus began her reputation of bringing peace. She came to be called the Peacemaker. Married at 12 to Denis, King of Portugal, she bore him two children. Elizabeth led a life of prayer and good works, caring for the poor and the sick. When her son twice led rebellions against his father, she helped them reconcile. After her husband's death in 1325, Elizabeth joined the, the poor Claire, giving up, her, giving up her rank of wealth for a life of simplicity. In 1336, she successfully settled a conflict between two warring kings, her son and grandson. She fell ill soon after and died on July 4, 1336. Colonized in 1625, Elizabeth is a patron of Catholic charities. Let's ask on this day, that Saint Elizabeth of Portugal, or as she is known in Portugal, Saint Isabel, pray for us. For the reading today, we will read Prophet Hosea, Prophet Hosea, chapter 2, verse 14 to 16, then we go to verses 19 to 20. Let's get started with the reading of the Word of God for today. Thus says the Lord concerning Israel, his people. I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. There she shall respond as in the days of her youth, as at the time when she came out of the land of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord, you will call me my husband and no longer will call me my ball. I will take you for my wife forever. I will take you for my wife in righteousness and in justice, in steadfast love and in mercy. I will take you for my wife in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This passage of Prophet Hosea, Prophet Hosea, is so beautiful. Thus says the Lord God concerning Israel, his people. So he is calling his people Israel, his wife, his beloved one. He says, I will bring her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her heart. When the Lord calls us to the wilderness, it's because he wants to speak to our hearts. The wilderness is a dry place, a place where there is no distractions. And the Lord many times brings us to places of no distractions so He can speak directly to us. He can speak tenderly to our hearts. And He says, There she shall respond as in the days of her youth. In the days of her youth means in the days when we first fell in love for each other. Our souls are these spouses of the Lord. Doesn't matter if you are a man or women. The Lord is the spouse of our soul. And he says that the wife, the bride, we, said, we call him, we call the Lord my husband and no longer my ball. It means my idol. The one whom I offer sacrifices. No, I will call you the one that I gave my life for. It's so beautiful this analogy that God makes. Calling Israel, calling his chosen people, his wife, his loved one. And now we know that the church is the loved one of the Lord. 
And we are the church. We are the body of the church. We are the church of God. The responsorio today, Psalm 145, 145 says, Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall loud your works to one another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and all will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, his, to all and His compassion is over all that He has made. The compassion of the Lord is on all that He has made, is on all of us. His compassion that goes to, to save us, His compassion that is there for us. And the Gospel from St. Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 to 26. While Jesus was speaking to the disciples of John the Baptist, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players in the crown making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, Jesus went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up, and the report of this spread throughout the district. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel today shows two healings, two cures that the Lord act. One with this woman that had, that was bleeding for so many years. This woman said to herself, if I only touch her, I will be saved. And she touched him and she was saved. Her faith was great. Her faith made her well. Her faith in Jesus, not her faith in things, but her faith in Jesus made her well. And then this leader of the synagogue, a man who heard about Jesus, but had faith that he could save his granddaughter, his little child. And Jesus went and saved her. Jesus took her by the hand and she was made well also. We can see that faith can move mountains. Faith can move. Faith can grant us miracles if we really believe in our Lord. Do you really believe Him? Do you really place yourself in His presence? Do you really entrust into His hands all your needs? If you do, you will be made well. If you do, the Lord will grant you His grace. And once again, I would like to make you an invitation to join us in our family festival. Come and live this time of grace with each one of us. Come and live this moment of healing and reconciliation with God, with your whole family. There will be teachings for parents, for the adults, for grandparents, for kids, for teenagers. It is a moment for the whole family to meet Jesus once again. If you are interested in this, um, in this festival, contact us and we can help you with the sign up. May the Lord bless us 
and may he bring us all together in his heart. And may we, as one body, as one church, can be united with him. Amen.